we're going to start on our school project part six, which is our nervous system or our nerves. We're going to need the same yellow puffy paint we use for the glands that we just did in part five. Um, after it dries, we can also write on it with a Sharpie, a fine point Sharpie, which you can see I've done on some of these areas. Um, before I get started on anything, um, I would, you know, always start with marking it in pencil because it's easy to erase. What you will find though with the puffy paint is you can kind of just peel it off if you make a mistake or you can kind of paint over it to make it look a little nicer, which I've done and still need to do a little bit more. Um, so we have two main divisions with our um, nervous system. We have the central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord. And then we have the peripheral nervous system, which is what we're gonna be working with today. Um, the cranial nerves are part of that peripheral nervous system and they're 12 paired nerves. Um, they can be afferent, efferent, or both, which we'll talk more about um, in our lecture. And they're connected to the base of the brain and they exit through, um, through the fissures and the foramina within the skull. So first of all, we have the um, olfactory cranial nerve one, which is going to enter the um, nose or the nasal cavity through the um, curveform plate with olfactory foramen. So cranial nerve one, olfactory. Cranial nerve two is the optic nerve, which enters the optic canal here. I marked it here, even though it's really not here on the skull, just so we can get a better idea that it just does go to the to the orbit there. Um, now if we turn on the side, this superior orbital fissure here is kind of a busy hub. We have um, oculomotor, the oculomotor um, cranial nerve three. We have the trochlear cranial nerve four. We have a division of cranial nerve five, which is the um, division one or the ophthalmic division of five. And then cranial nerve six, which is the abducens. Um, when we come back here a little bit further, the internal acoustic meatus, we have the facial nerve here, the vestibular cochlear cranial nerve 8 here, and we have 9, 10, 11, 9 being the glossopharyngeal, 10 being the vagus, 11 being the accessory nerve, cranial nerve, and cranial nerve 12, the hypoglossal. Okay, we're going to go into depth on a couple nerves, in particular cranial nerve uh, 5, um, which is the trigeminal nerve, and then a little later we're going to review um, cranial nerve 7, which is the facial nerve, in a little more depth. So first of all, the cranial nerve, um, it has three divisions. The ophthalmic division is here, or the V1, and then we have the mandibular division, um, which exits through the foramen rotundum here and then the um, mandibular division which exits through the foramenal valley here. So first of all, with that ophthalmic division, it has um, three branches that we're going to discuss. The lacrimal branch here, the frontal branch here, which also is um, connected to the supratrochlear and the supraorbital branches as well, and then we have the nasociliary branch here, which terminates in the infratrochlear um, nerve branch here, and it also has the ciliary nerves and the anterior um, ethmoidal nerves, which I wasn't even able to mark because it's kind of hard to get a marker in there. Um, next, we will talk about the second division of the maxillary um, the trigeminal nerve or the maxillary V2 division. Okay, the second uh, division or the maxillary division V2 of the trigeminal nerve is the maxillary nerve. So it tells you our location is going to be in the maxilla area. Um, it has branches including the zygomatic, infraorbital, um, anterior superior alveolar, middle superior alveolar, posterior superior alveolar, and the greater lecithin palatine. Um, nerve branches as well as the nasopalatine um, branch as well. So the zygomatic um, enters into the pterygopalatine fossa here through the inferior orbital fissure. Um, it also has uh, branches off here, the zygomatical um, uh, facial and the zygomatical temporal branches. And then we have the um, 
the infraorbital nerve here, which runs through the infraorbital uh, through this infraorbital foramen here, and it travels posteriorly in the infraorbital canal in groove, which is here. Um, through the inferior orbital fissure and into that pterygopalatine fossa where it um, can join, joins the, the ASA or the anterior superior alveolar nerve. The anterior superior alveolar nerve, which is here, you can see where the IO and the ASA join here, um, the anterior superior, it ascends along the anterior wall of the maxillary sinus, which is here and it joins that infraorbital nerve in the uh, infraorbital canal. Um, oftentimes it has these, um, you know, it, in, it innervates these maxillary anterior teeth, and oftentimes it does cross the midline, which can affect our anesthesia in that interior area. The middle superior alveolar, the MSA nerve, um, ascends to join the IO as well in the lateral wall of the maxillary sinus. This one, however, is not always present in all patients. Um, then farther to the posterior, we have the PSA, or the posterior superior alveolar nerve. Um, internal branches exit the PSA um, foramina on the maxillary tuberosity and joins external branches um, here to the periodontium and the um, the teeth themselves into the, the nerve um, entering into the pulp. It joins the infraorbital maxillary nerves up here in the pterygopalatine fossa. So here's kind of where they join there at that trunk. The greater palatine nerve, um, it's located between the mucoperiosteum and bone of the anterior hard palate. Um, it enters posterior through the greater palatine foramen near the maxillary second and third molars, which is right on the inside here with that larger foramen. And then we have the lesser palatine foramen, um, which is a little more posterior here, and it joins the greater palatine nerve in the pterygopalatine canal, and they travel through the pterygopalatine canal together. Our third division um, of the trigeminal nerve is the mandibular division, which I've marked here. It's the largest division of the trigeminal nerve, and it's formed by a small anterior trunk and a large posterior trunk, um, and it's both motor and sensory. And if we flip our skull over, here's where it's going to exit here, and it does join our V1 and V2, which are going to be right around this area, um, in that infratemporal fossa to form the trigeminal ganglion. So again, it travels through that foramen ovale. The anterior uh, branches are the muscular, muscular and buccal branches. Posterior branches or trunk branches are going to be the auriculotemporal, lingual, inferior alveolar, mental incisive, and mylohyoid, which we'll discuss. Before this um, division three uh, divides. It has a men meningeal branches, which um, go up into the part of the duramater, and it is also efferent motor. It has muscular branches for the medial pterygoid muscle, tensor tympani, and the tensor veli palatini, so important to know all those. Our first anterior branch is the long buccal branch, which is down here. Uh, it travels posteriorly in the cheek, deep to the master muscle at the level of the occlusal plane of the last mandibular molar. It crosses in front of the anterior board of the ramus, which we can see here how it does that, and it goes between the two heads of the lateral pterygoid to join up with that anterior trunk of the V3. It's important not to confuse this with the buccal nerve branch of the facial nerve, since those names are similar, so we tend to call this one the long buccal. Um, the other anterior branches include the deep temporal, which is here, the lateral pterygoid nerve, and then going back to our jaw, we have the masseteric nerve, which is here. So those three uh, posterior branches, we have, first of all, the auriculotemporal, which is here, runs deep to the lateral pterygoid muscle and neck of the mandible and encircles that middle meningeal artery and joins the posterior trunk of the V3, or division three. 
we also have part of that posterior branch is the lingual nerve, which is here. It runs down here. It's hard to see it because it um, kind of mixes in with that IA there on here. Um, it is important to remember this lingual nerve travels along the lateral sur surface of the tongue. It passes laterally under the duct of the submandibular gland, which is going to be around here, and it runs medial to that um, the pterygoid muscle in the mandible. So it is going to be a lot more medial or a little more medial than the inferior alveolar. Um, it does run, again, anterior medial to that IA nerve um, and ascends to join that posterior trunk of our Division three nerve. So our IA, or inferior alveolar, it's kind of just marked IA right here, is formed by the merger of the incisive nerve, which is, runs here, and the mental nerve, which I've marked here. It's kind of a busy area there with that mental foramen. So those two come together. They come through that mandibular canal. Mandibular foramen is where that um, IA nerve is located. And then those go up into the infratemporal fossa to join that V3 division. We also have the mylohyoid nerve, which is a part of the posterior division here. And it is a small branch um, forming after the IA nerve exits the mandibular foramen. Um, it pierces the sphenomandibular ligament and runs anterior and inferiorly to the mylohyoid groove and onto the inferior surface of the mylohyoid muscle. And that concludes our V3 division. We'll be doing the facial nerve in detail next. Lastly, we're going to go into depth on the facial nerve, cranial nerve 7, which exits the skull here at the internal acoustic meatus. It travels through the facial canal in the temporal bone, and it branches off into the stapedius branch, the greater petrosal nerve, and the corda tympani, which we will talk about um, in depth here in just a sec. The main trunk emerges through the skull, through the stylomastoid foramen right here, and it gives off um, the posterior auricular nerve, a nerve to the posterior belly of the digastric, and the stylohyoid um, muscles as well, a, a division there. Uh, it passes through the parotid gland, which is going to be around here, and in there it doesn't innervate the parotid gland, but it does divide into branches innervating the muscles of facial expression. These include, although we haven't written on them because they're still um, wet, the temporal, the zygomatic, I did right on these, the buccal, mandibular, and the cervical. So those are for the um, muscles of facial expression. Going into depth here on the greater petrosal, if we flip our skull over, it does exit after it goes through that canal. It exits through the Freeman last room here. And it is going to branch off the facial nerve um, before it exits the skull, and then it travels through the foramen lacerum and then into the pterygopalatine ganglion, which is here. I marked with that. Again, I haven't written on it because it's, it's wet, but that big uh, blob right there, that circular mass. Um, then the postganglion fibers, you can see how close it is to the V2 here, the um, maxillary division of our trigeminal nerve. Um, so those postganglionic fibers are going to join with the maxillary nerve branches of that trigeminal nerve. The cordotipony is going to branch off the facial nerve in the petrous portion of the temporal bone. It crosses the medial surface of the eardrum and exits through the petrotympanic tympanic fissure, which we remember is here, right here, that yellow line is, that's our petrotympanic fissure, um, the, uh, which is posterior to our TMJ, and it travels with the lingual nerve, so it is going to head down or inferior um, this way um, towards the mandible. It travels with that lingual nerve along the floor of the mouth and communicates with the submandibular gland. So let's take a closer look at that. On the mandible, I have marked it 
um, here with the lingual nerve, I just wrote and chorda tympani instead of trying to put another nerve in there because that would be kind of messy. <laughs> so I just marked lingual nerve and that one together since they do travel together. The posterior auricular, um, let's take a look. So here's that stylomastoid foramen where the main um, trunk of that facial nerve is going to exit, that stylomastoid foramen. So then we have the posterior auricular branch. We have the um, stylohyoid branch here. And then we have the posterior digastric nerves here. So it's going to innervate that posterior di digastric. And then we talked about, of course, um, again, the, the branches to muscles of facial expression. We have the temporal branch here, psychomatic branches, which I haven't marked. It's that one that's unmarked. And then again, we also have the buccal branches, mandibular branch, and then the cervical branch as well on those.